Well, it is just 23 days to Election Day. Early voting is already underway throughout the state. The Secretary of State's office has already received 22,000 absentee ballots. One of the races topping the ballot here, of course, is the race for governor. According to RealClearPolitics.com, an average of all the polls in the Minnesota governor's race has Governor Mark Dayton with a 10-point lead, 48 percentage points to 38 percentage points over Jeff Johnson. Jeff Johnson, the Republican, will be a guest on this show for an extended interview just a couple of days before the election. But today, Governor Mark Dayton is joining us. And Governor Dayton, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Esme. All right, let me ask you about this news out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, Just on Thursday, you held a a news conference and a meeting with top health officials. How concerned are you that this health care worker obeying complete CDC protocols, wearing full protective garb in a hospital, contracted the disease? Well, it's very concerning when anyone who's in the helping profession, you know, contracts a serious or deadly disease by, you know, making contact presumably with uh, one of the patients. So, you know, it's something that uh, the authorities will be looking at very carefully, trying to determine what uh, caused uh, this transfer, and we'll learn from that here. Uh, you know, the, the number one goal is to prevent anyone from coming into Minnesota with Ebola, and you know, the, then. If that happens, the, the healthcare professionals and the hospital and others take over. But it shows again why you know keeping somebody out of the state is number one. Well, let, let me ask you. Your, your commissioner at Ellinger, at Dr. Ed Ellinger, said that they were going to be following complete CDC protocols here. That workers had gotten the word, they got in the training. It, it appears it's possible that this healthcare worker actually contracted this when they removed their protective garb. Do you really feel that healthcare workers have gotten the adequate training so that they could handle a case? And are you going to review this particular case in Dallas? Well, c- certainly the CDC will review it as well as uh, our State Department of Health, the people who are the experts in this area, the hospitals as well. I mean, they've learned from you know, what has happened in Texas already, and they say, you know, that's very helpful and, you know, just dealing with the reality of this situation, which is new for most people. But our hospitals are well trained. I don't know what the situation is in Texas, but you know our hospitals and staffs are very, very well trained. I'm sure they'll take this into account and uh, develop a better protocol for removing uh, gowns and, and gloves and the like. But you know, I, I have great confidence that we here in Minnesota have the, the skill, the training, and the ability to, if something should happen here, someone should arrive, that, that they'll be contained immediately and tr- properly treated, and that people will use the proper precautions. All right, on Thursday, you said that you would like to see those enhanced Ebola screenings here at Twin Cities International Airport. You said you had contact the CDC, that you're working with the Minnesota congressional delegation. What have you heard, and do you think that's going to happen here? Well, I've shared the draft of a letter with uh, Senator Kobachart, Senator Franken, and it'll go out tomorrow morning to uh, Dr. Thomas Frieden, the director of the uh, CDC, and we'll follow up also uh, with a higher level with the uh, White House government relations uh, staff. So, you know, we're, we're going to make a strong push. You know, we have the highest uh, Liberian community of any state in the nation. Uh, that increases our exposure, and, you know, if, if one person were to come into Minnesota with uh, this disease, it would you know, be a serious uh, challenge, and, and we just want to prevent that from happening. All right, let me ask you about something else that you that created quite a stir this week in a debate. You said that you supported a gas tax. The next day, you said that you were not calling about a direct tax at the pump, but rather at the wholesale level. Uh, your opponent, Jeff Johnson, said you were flip-flopping. Uh, clearly, even something at the wholesale level is going to get passed on to consumers a lot of people feeling the pain at the pump even though gas prices are down. Well, I've said time after time that I'm against the gas at the tax at, at the pump increase. Uh, the wholesale tax would you know, be distributed through the system to the suppliers, to the, the consumers certainly. You know, my view is that we need to turn all the possible cards face up on the table in the next legislative session and deal with the the fact that our transportation system is getting worse and worse. Highways, roads, bridges are deteriorating, our public transit system is behind, and we're told by the experts that if we're six billion dollars short over the next ten years of the money that uh, is coming in from state and federal sources and what's needed to be done just to maintain things as they are, not even to make them better. So, the so real are you issue saying is, that there has to be some no, kind of a tax? I think it's up to the people in Minnesota. You know, the, you know some of the uh, businesses who were surveyed just, just last week said 
you know, we don't think it's a crisis. We don't think uh, it's a priority. If that's the attitude, then, and it probably won't pass without business support. It didn't, uh, in the gas tax increase in, 2000, in 2008. But if, if that's the attitude, then we'll but, just have to live with a system that's going to get worse, more congested, more is, dangerous. Is people don't propose taxes. I mean, is this well, something you're going to propose that you're going to ask the I'll, legislature I'll offer, for? I will make a proposal. For uh, a gas tax at the wholesale Well, I, I, you know, we're not definite yet on how we're going to do that. You know, that's one of the options. You know, $6 billion. Some people are saying that, well, we'll just reorder priorities or we'll you know, find administrative efficiencies. I mean, that doesn't get us a fraction of the way to the $6 billion that are necessary. It's not going to come from the federal government. So people need to look the future in the face and say, you know, do we want to improve it? Do we want to just keep it the way it is, or do we want to do nothing and know that it's going to get worse, as it has over the last 20 years? All right. Well, Governor Dayton, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back in just a few minutes with more of our extended interview. We also want to let you know that coming up in, in a few weeks, we will also have an interview, an extended one, with his opponent, Jeff Johnson. Thank you so much.